But it's very much not the case that you have to be an atheist to accept evolution. This is something they use to drive a wedge between their group and the rest of the scientific world. Usually the first stumbling block is that people say, well, I must surrender my faith in order to accept science. And that's a false choice. But a lot of churches make you do that. I don't believe in God. I believe in science. What stimulated this whole thing to begin with was years and years of battling creationists who had never in their life seen a real fossil and could not tell one bone from another and were pretending to talk about fossils and they couldn't even tell if the slide was upside down or right side up or not. Okay? <laughs> and that was something very frustrating. I debated their main guy, Dwayne Gish, in 1983, and I've debated quite a few of the other ones. And again and again, it was obvious to me they're just reading from a script. They have no idea what their slides actually show because they have no firsthand experience. And yet, it's very common in the creationist uh, community to pretend that they are paleontologists, to pretend that they know what they're doing. Uh, but the problem is, if you look close enough, you recognize that they'll say, oh, we have so many PhDs in support of creationism. But it doesn't, by itself, I mean a PhD shows you're effect effectively a paleontologist. A PhD just shows you know how to jump through a lot of academic hoops and stick to the problem long enough. And what I, what I often say to people is that, PhD actually makes you narrower than when you start out because you have to specialize to a level that you can finish a specific project and you may actually become less smart at the end. But they, of course, try to cow their, their, their listeners by saying, I'm a PhD, I'm an expert in everything. Okay, and that's a false argument right there. That's a false use of argument and authority. It's a comforting little delusion you've but, constructed there, Chris. But because if you now, don't have the chops to go get your PhD yeah. and actually do the work, then shut up. Um, I guess good luck with that, and let us know when you publish something in a peer-reviewed journal that oh, I'll give you something documents here. that. Um, I'll give you some stuff in peer review journal. Um, I, I don't want them. What? <laughs> what? I, I don't want them. But you, you, you said you were even curious about this, right? I mean, you, you no, I, I'm actually bored beyond belief. So the problem they have is that with this thinking that life is a ladder comes from a lot of the older notions about evolution. And you see old diagrams like this one here, the evolution of horse through time. That's from 1925. It's 90 years old. Okay, it was as good as we had then because we had very few fossil horses. But what we now have is a very bushy, branching pattern of horse evolution. One that has many, many species which coexist in time. And there's some places, for example, in western Nebraska where there are 15 different species of horse in the same hole in the ground. Okay, it's not just a simple linear march through time, one horse to the next. And this is an improvement, right? This is more information over the last 90 years now that we have been able to obtain that shows us how much more complex horse evolution was than we thought 90 years ago. But you'll have creationist books saying, oh, well, they changed their story. Well, of course we did. We got more data. That's what science is supposed to do. Okay? And very typical, of course, of the problem is that when you see diagrams like this, this is virtually the icon of how evolution is portrayed in almost all media, but especially in print media. And you have various human lineages marching through time with whole sorts of variations thereof. So here's a creationist saying the Earth is only 10,000 years, somewhere between Homo erectus and Neanderthal. Or here it is, humans going to the advanced form and then descending to a stoop-shouldered uh, person on a computer. I also have one, I couldn't find the slide where it d descends into Rambo at that point. Um, <laughs> and there, that, that icon is just everywhere. And it's totally wrong, right? This is the way most of the public understands evolution, so much so that this is the way it's represented in a single image, except it's completely wrong and has been wrong since 1859. Human evolution is not a march up from cavemen to us. It's many, many, many different species, right? There's something like 20 different species of hominids now known. One was just described a few weeks ago, the Homo solidi from South Africa, 
right? It happens almost every other year that another species gets described. The people who figured out that the fossil record changed through time were creationists. Way back in 1820, at least 30 years before Darwin's book came out. Okay? They were all devout, mostly Church of England believers. None of them questioned the Bible in any way at that time, but they knew the fossil record showed change through time. There was no evolution in the picture at all at that point. Okay? There was no evolution in the picture at all at that point. Okay? The real fossil record is not a kitty book diagram. It's actually very complex, which is why kitty book diagrams are simple. But you don't try to explain something that's an abstraction from a kitty book. You can go in the central Rocky Mountains at Dinosaur National Monument and look at huge bone beds of Jurassic dinosaurs, which presumably could hike up to higher ground when it got flooded, except that right above it are marine beds with giant clams and nautilus relatives and things like that, which supposedly should have been in the lower strata. And then right above that are Eocene mammals which are sitting somehow on top of the dinosaurs, which actually should have been able to step on them on their way to the high ground. And then on top of that are more fish, right? That's a real fossil record. It's complex. It's not a cartoon of primitive to, 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 to complex. Or the area I did my dissertation work in, the big badlands of South Dakota, you have a real sequence of fossil mammals here from the bottom to the top. And some of the biggest ones are at the bottom layers, and then right above them are the turtles. In fact, the most common animals in this layer right here are land tortoises. So we have a version of the tortoise and the hare where apparently the tortoise could outrun even the biggest land mammals, if you believe flood geology. So there's all the hominid fossils there. Evolution, we have the fossils, we win. <laughs> This is a creation center, Wendy Wright, and it's almost excruciating to watch because Richard Dawkins tries to very calmly and in his very a proper British fashion just reason with this woman and say, well, what about these fossils? And what about those fossils? And you will go to the museum and she says, I've never seen any transitional fossils in a museum. You know, if you put them right in front of them, as I've done when I debate creationists, and put pictures of them on the slide or even bring specimens, they will refuse to see what's right in front of them. Because it's not about evidence. It never was about evidence. It's never about facts. It's all about something else.